we are now going to spend just one class period graphing absolute values. In other algebra classes, they spend an entire unit discussing transformations of absolute values, and you have to memorize all this stuff. And, and it's, it shouldn't be that hard. Graphing absolute value graphs is pretty easy, okay? Because you'll notice things when we graph just the basic y equals absolute x. Now, let's pretend I don't know what the graph of y equals absolute x looks like. What would you do if you don't know what a certain graph looks like? Just start finding solutions. Now, we see we have a y and an x. That means our solutions are xy pairs. And we plot those xy pairs on a two-dimensional plane. And I'm just going to plug in random values for x, like negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2. And I can think about all the decimals in between. I can think about all the values to the right of it, to the left of it. Hopefully, if I start seeing some uh, you know, patterns, I can extrapolate those patterns and understand what's going on. Now, if I have x equals negative 2, I have the absolute value of negative 2, which is positive 2. It means I have to point negative 2, 2. Negative 2, 2. Plot that point, that's a solution. If I continue to plug in, I would have the point negative 1, 1, 0, 0, 1, 1, and 2, 2. So negative 1, 1, 0, 0, 1, 1, and 2, 2. Creating this very distinct type of graph. Now, if you think about it, if I plugged in any decimal, like point 0.1, I'd have a y of 0.1. If I plugged in negative 0.1, well, the absolute value would make that a positive 0.1. So all of my solutions would end up on either of these lines here or here. And I can correctly assume that we're going to connect and extend that. And this should look fairly familiar to you as the graph of y equals the absolute value of x. Now, there's two distinctive characteristics of these absolute value graphs that we need to know to help graph other ones that are a little more complex. One distinct characteristic is that point right there. That point is what we call the vertex. Now, the vertex occurs at the minimum value of our absolute value. Now, what is the minimum value that an absolute value can have? Thank you, Mr. Potorf. The smallest value that can come out of an absolute value is zero. The next thing I notice is that the graph of the absolute value of x is symmetrical. Which means if I know one point to the right of my vertex, I can go ahead and assume that that point, at least the y-coordinate, will be in the exact same location, the same amount of x-coordinates away to the left of the vertex. If we know that, we're going to be able to graph absolute values. Okay? So, let's look at some absolute values. The absolute value of 2x minus 4 equals y. Two things we need. One is understanding the minimum value we can have in our absolute value, or understanding where the vertex is located. The vertex will be located when my absolute value equals zero for any type of absolute value graph. So I will take this absolute value and set it equal to zero. But we know 
that when I'm solving this type of equation with an absolute value, that I don't have to care about the plus or minus because I have a positive zero and negative zero, it's still zero. So it's really not when the absolute value is equal to zero, it's when the stuff inside the absolute value equals zero. I then can add four, divide by two, or just know that x equals two. So my vertex will be located at x equals two. Now, don't just assume that the y coordinate's gonna be zero. Check. We wanna find the x comma y. So I'm going to plug in two into my equation and just make sure I know what the y coordinate is, because it won't always be at zero. However, in this case, it is. The vertex is at two, zero, boom. That is when the absolute value is a minimum. That will be the vertex. Now, guess what? All I need is one other point. And if I have one other point, I'll know what the entire graph will look like. So I'm gonna say, all we need is one other point. Well, if I'm at two, let's go to three. I'll plug in three in for x. I get the absolute value of six minus four, which is two, means I have the point three, two. So that means I have the point three, two. Why do I say that we only need one other point and we're good to go? Because it's symmetrical. It's going to be the same on the other side of things. If I have three, two, I'm going to have one, two. And these are just like a combination of two lines. If you want to think about it, it's like y equals plus or minus 2x minus 4. That's just a line, okay? But it's a positive 2x minus 4, it's a negative 2x minus 4, so we don't have to worry about anything as long as we understand it's kind of connecting two lines. So straight line that way, straight line that way, we're good. That's it. Let's look at the next one. Now, it's not just an absolute value. There's other stuff going on. In other algebra classes, you're going to be like, oh, well, we're going to move the vertex this way and that way, and then we're going to do this for the slope. And No, don't worry about that, okay? I'm not worried about transformations. I'm just understanding. You need to understand what the minimum value this could be. Well, the absolute value can only produce a least value of zero. If this is zero, then this entire thing is going to be the smallest that it can be, which is three. This is how I'm finding my vertex. When the absolute value equals zero. And again, when I have an absolute value equal to zero, I don't really care about the absolute value. It's just the stuff inside equal to zero, and I get x equals negative one. So I know my vertex is at negative one, but don't assume the vertex is at negative one, zero. Watch in this situation. I plug negative one into my original equation. First of all, I know that this is gonna be zero. Just to confirm, I know I'm gonna have zero. So then I add 3, and I get, okay, negative 1, 3 is the location of my vertex. Following how I got that, negative 1, 3. It's the absolute value when it's a minimum. That will produce a minimum value for my function. Then find the y-coordinate. All I need is one other point. If 
if I got negative one, might as well use zero or one or two. It doesn't matter. Might as well just be pretty close to my vertex. I'm going to look at zero. I get two plus three, which is five, which means I have the point zero five. Since I know I have the point zero five, I know I have the point negative two, five. Boom, boom, we're done. Okay, you guys do the next one. You need to see the next one to be able to do it. I can tell. Find the vertex. The vertex is when the absolute value equals zero. You set the absolute value equal to zero. The least this can be is zero. Right? So again, at negative one, I have my vertex. But find the x, y point to find the exact location of my vertex. Yes? It's just notation, kind of like function notation, showing you that I am plugging negative 1 into y. It's sure. Instead of y of negative 1, I can decide y equals 3 times, I know this is going to be 0 plus 1. That's 1. So I have the point negative 1, 1 again. All I need is one more point. Knowing that absolute values are symmetrical and have a vertex, knowing that the vertex will occur at the minimum value of something, we're good. Skip that one. Let's go here. Yes, what happens if I put a negative in front of this absolute value? Well, again, my vertex on the absolute value equals 0. That's when x is equal to 0. I have the point zero, 0. I need one more point. Well, if I plugged in 1, I'd have y is equal to negative absolute 1, which is negative 1, which means I have one more point over here, 1, negative 1, which means I'll have the point negative 1, negative 1, which means my graph all of a sudden is flipped. If you just follow the same procedure, you will naturally get this flipped graph. There's nothing crazy to it. If you just follow the find the vertex, find one other point, you will naturally see this flipped. Nits, so long as we understand that the absolute value graph looks like a V. So, if I give you this, step one, vertex. It's when my absolute value equals zero. Well, that's just when x minus three equals zero. That's when x is equal to three. When x is three, y will equal negative 2 times 0 plus 2. y will equal 2, giving me the point 3, 2. Shh. We're not done yet. 
Now, without knowing that I have a negative 2 there, just by doing the one more point, without doing anything crazy, well, y of 4. Let's find when x is 4. I get negative 2 times 4 minus 3 plus 2. That's negative 2 plus 2, which is 0. 4, 0. 4, 0. 2, 0. Boom. That's it. You guys have a wonderful weekend.